how's everybody doing? Um, as always, glad you guys are here. I uh, appreciate what you do for um, Marshall Sports and obviously the football program. A um, little bit of housekeeping. Obviously, our players are deep in the middle of uh, pre-registration and all of that kind of stuff, getting ready for next week or next semester, um, kind of trying to get ahead on that. We talked last week about the um, breast cancer awareness fundraiser that we did. Um, before we add the staff and the administration, um, the players are already up to over $1,000 um, of their own <clears throat> per diem money that they donated back. Um, so a really good start, and we'll gather all the staff, and the administration is going to chip in as well, and then I'll chip in, and we'll be able to make a nice donation to the uh, local uh, breast cancer awareness um, group here to kind of help create some resources for them as well. So a uh, really good opportunity this week coming up. Uh, gets a really good opponent um, again. I'm not sure <clears throat> if um, in the past we've been in this type of uh, competitive uh, conference where every week you're um, battling some really competitive teams and not just um, competitive teams, but teams that have done some things throughout the season that um, are um, respectable, you know, last week, um, this program or a couple weeks ago, this program beat coastal and coastal came and played us tough. And, um, earlier in the year, this program, um, ODU beat, uh, Virginia tech, I think kind of opened the season. So a lot of really good football players and coaches and staffs and teams in this conference. Uh, so another great opportunity, um, to go against them, um, it'd be a great challenge up there in Norfolk, uh, this weekend. So with that, I'll open up questions. Coach, we saw quite a bit. Oh, sorry. Uh, Is we, it snowing outside? Uh, no, I'm from San Diego, so anything below 50, I have oh, to okay. have like, layers right. on. You're not going to so. make it in Huntington. This is another 12 months of uh, 50. Yeah, no, you'll see me in an Eskimo <laughs> uh, jacket at that point. But, uh, Coach, we did see a couple players get injured on Saturday, anything from Little Nicks and then a Stretcher uh, with your freshman linebacker. So just where, where is everybody, like, personnel-wise right now, and how much – this Saturday, are you going to have to kind of rely on that next man up? Yeah, um, obviously not getting into detail with anyone. We were pretty lucky. A lot of them were um, injuries that we anticipate having everyone back. Um, James Smyree was a young man that um, <clears throat> we took off for precautionary reasons. He checked out fine, and um, he's back with us, back in his normal routine. Um, obviously, nine, ten weeks into the season, you know, you have your normal, you know, um, bumps and bruises. Um, but for the most part, as of today, we, we're, we're fairly healthy with the guys that we anticipated having uh, moving forward. As we continue to evaluate some guys uh, throughout the week, we'll kind of know their status um, for Saturday. But as of today, if we play today, we would feel like we'd have to be able to run out with the same guys we ran out with um, last week. Obviously, at this point in the season, um, the you hear me talk about it all the time, the back end of your roster, um, which was something that we went out and tried to um, tried to upgrade with, with more players, more talent. Um, now those guys even take away injury, just the normal wear and tear of a season. Um, now those guys are going to have to be able to step up and play a little bit more. We've been lucky enough to kind of rotate some guys at different positions. <clears throat> some guys um, are going to have to take an increased role playing. Um, but for the most part, we should be able to start with the you know, 22 guys on or 22 guys plus special teams on either side of the ball. Um, and then as the game goes on, we just got to kind of monitor, you know, probably at some point there's probably some guys that are close to mm, five, 600 reps um, just, you know, over the course of the season. So making sure that we give them their best opportunity to go out and produce and be consistent um, is the big thing. But for the most part, we're healthy. What does ODU do on offense that stands out to you? Yeah, you know, they're, they're, um, they do a really good job in the pass game. They, they had a tight end, um, Zach Kuntz, who I had a relationship with from my Penn State days, who um, has been out. But their, their offense kind of circles around, you know, the tight end and the running back. I think the running back does a really good job. They run the ball really well. He's got really good balance, um, <clears throat> really good vision. And then they use their tight ends in the pass game, which creates a little bit of a – um, challenge because usually your tight ends are matched up on your backers who have a run responsibility. Um, so it's not like a corner where you can just run with the guy and stay in his hip pocket. Uh, when you use the tight ends in a pass game, either you're throwing it to them or they are a target that you target. Um, you create a little bit of disparity between your linebacker level and your, you know, your secondary. Um, and they do a really good job of stretching the field that way. 
They also do a really good job at the receiver position. Uh, I think the uh, Jennings kid that transferred in is doing a really good job for them. Um, but it starts with them being able to run the football, you know, because because they can run the football consistently, you got to commit the right amount of hats to stopping the run. With that leaves some areas, some areas in the zone that you got to be able to, to kind of drop back and get to, you know, as they read pass. When you look at the special teams unit, in particular when it comes to the kicking game, um, you said after Coastal Carolina, you know, sometimes that, that that's a 50-50 play. Is that changing the way that you approach um, offensive play calling when you get into the scoring area? Um, not really. Um, I, I will say I, I don't think our, our specialists have been as consistent as we need them to be. Um, that, that's not a secret to them or, you know, to, to anybody. Um, we have two true freshmen uh, take about the two freshmen, John, not a true freshman, but two freshman players playing those positions. Um, and the consistency hasn't been there. Now, it's magnified, obviously, from a field goal standpoint when you're not scoring a lot of touchdowns. If we were scoring five or six touchdowns and missed two field goals, you'd be like, oh, okay. But when you're <clears> – all of your drives are, are magnified – uh, when you, they don't end in points, it magnifies it. Obviously, Reese has got to continue to improve and continue to be more consistent. I think we've seen uh, flashes of, of really greatness, you know, being able to hit the ball really high, um, being able to hit it from, you know, distance. Um, but we've got to be able to see the consistency of it with where we are. Same thing with John. I think because, you know, um, our defense is playing really well, his consistency has got to go up so that we can continue to win the field position battle. Magnified again, when you're not moving the ball as frequently – um, on offense, then the punt becomes almost like another offensive weapon, if that makes sense, to be able to flip the field. Um, I think it's more flow of the game for me. I think our defense is playing really good, um, consistent, you know, a handful of plays here and there, but pretty consistent. Um, teams moving the ball, the length of the field on our defense has not been something that's happened um, often this year. So when we get in a situation where you're right in that window of, you know, you could go for it, you couldn't go for it. Uh, most of the time, early in games, I'm going to yield to the defense and try and give them an opportunity, um, you know, to, to flip the field and make the team have to drive the field. Um, so it probably weighs more based on how your offense is playing when you kind of take those chances. Um, and then obviously the strength of our defense is allowing us to be a little bit more um, punt-minded instead of, you know, hey, let's go for it. There's an area on the field where we kind of make a decision. <clears throat> I think there's a time in the game when you kind of make a decision. Um, but for the most part, I'm yielding to the defense um, because they're playing really well. Um, if I was coaching for the Chiefs, I'd probably yield for the offense and Patrick Mahomes and say, go for it. Um, but I think the ebbs and flows. Last year, we were probably a little, little flipped because we had some you know, explosion on offense. We had some things we could do. We felt like we could take some chunks. Um, but this year, the way our defense is playing, I think it's really good if we can continue to run the ball well, not turn it over be really, really good in the red zone, whether that's touchdowns or three points, and then not put our defense in compromising positions. Um, I think a little bit what happened Saturday night is on the first drive, we gave up 30 yards. We had a 15-yard run, and then we got a 15-yard penalty. So that's probably the biggest play that's hit on our defense in four or five weeks. Well, it's because we got a penalty on top of, so now we're in a different position, if that kind of makes sense. Um, obviously, that's the things we got to eliminate. Coach, with uh, looking at how, you know, Cam's had a couple of games now where he's been, you know, the quarterback the whole way. Um, how do you kind of impress upon the offense you guys have to score a little bit more without putting pressure on them to score more? Because obviously they're, they're trying to score. But after you looked at the film, you probably really? saw what, what <laughs> you that. probably saw what happened, I, I guess, that. when yeah. you checked the film. Huh? Um, <clears throat> no, I, I think that the, 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 the emphasis is on playing well. I think when you start saying, well, we have to score or we have to do this, you put a lot of pressure on kids. Um, the, the emphasis is on playing well, playing well, doing your job, moving the ball down the field. Um, obviously, the goal is to score, and obviously they're trying to do that. But I think you got to put the emphasis. We've put the emphasis on playing well, eliminating penalties and turnovers. When we do that, usually the drive ends up pretty good. We can take away the penalties and we can take away turning the ball over. We're able to move the ball consistently because we've been able to run the ball. Um, you know, you go back to Saturday night. The first play of the game, we got the ball in the minus 10 because of a special teams penalty. Well, that changes the dynamic. You know what I mean? I'm not saying we're, we're moving the ball, but I ain't saying we can move it 90 yards without an issue, right? It's just college football. So, again, all of those things combine when you're not explosive as we want to be on offense. Um, everybody's got to kind of do their job. So, I think we put the emphasis on just playing well. 
um, you know, being really, really efficient on first down, um, doing a really, really good job of manageable third downs, um, and then taking care of the ball, eliminating the penalties. And then if you put the emphasis on that, then it doesn't become, well, we failed because we didn't score, if, if that makes sense. If we drive the ball out to the 50 and we get stopped and I choose to punt, the offense really didn't fail. They had one more down to try to get whatever yards that is. But if you put it on just playing well, it takes a little bit of the pressure off, a little bit of the anxiety, a little bit of the feeling that we didn't do what we were supposed to do or we failed on that drive, so we got to wait again for another drive. So that's kind of how we focus on it. What's the old Dominion defense like when they do that? <clears throat> you know, they, they're committed to stopping the run, which is um, – <clears throat> a challenge because we're obviously committed to running the ball. Um, they commit a lot of hats to the ball um, in, in the run game. Their backers are really good. I think their Mike Linebacker leads the country <clears throat> in um, tackles, which is another um, tough defense that we're playing. You know, kind of we played Troy, and they they're, had an all-time lead tackler there. Um, but he does a really good job. He does a really good job. He's got a really good feel. It's not like they're blitzing him every down, but he's got a really good feel and instinct for runs, where they're going to bend back, where the running back has to go based on the front that's in front of them. And then they do a good job of committing the extra hatch to the box. So you kind of got the guy who's playing half run, half pass. You got another guy who's playing half run, half pass. And as soon as they know it's run, they're in there. <clears throat> so you can't necessarily go block them because they're half run, half pass. Um, so you got to be able to have ways to control them, RPOs, runs, moving the pocket, those type of things, and still be able to run the ball in your normal run game, if that makes sense. When you look at some of the successes you've had in, in the past game, obviously Corey's broken a couple plays. Um, you know, where do you attribute that success to? Is, is that you know a look you're trying to take advantage of defensively, or? I think it's a combination. I think it's a combination of um, one. Cam has really started to expand his role or his ability, capacity on offense. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he's able to kind of, you know, be a little bit more involved in the RPO game instead of just run or this. Um, also, I think it's a little bit of the byproduct of being to run the ball so well. Because we're running the ball so well, teams are committing more hats to the run, which is opening up the pass game. <clears throat> Earlier in the year, Teams really didn't know who LeBorn was. It was kind of like, oh, the 22's out. They got this other kid in there. Oh, wait, he got 100 yards, two touchdowns. Oh, wait, he got another 100 yards. And as the season went on, which is typical, teams start to adjust. Um, so now teams are committing a lot more hats to the run, which is good because now the pass game has to come a lot, uh, which we've been able to do the last couple of weeks. Now what we've got to do is eliminate the turnovers and eliminate the penalties that force us into passing situations. We are a good team when we have both options because teams have to play one or the other, and we can play off of that. When we get into situations third and 12, 15, 16, well, everybody in the stadium knows you got to throw the ball. <clears throat> or if you don't, they boo, boo. Or you, you, know, you ran a four-yard play, you needed 15. Um, so when we're able to keep it where we have an advantage where we're either run or pass, then we can allow the quarterback and the running backs and the receivers to play as a unit. Rather than, okay, it's third and long, well, everybody knows you got to drop back a pass, and then you're putting the old line in this, you know, disadvantage because all of a sudden those four and five defensive linemen who all they want to do is rush the passer anyway, they pin their ears back, and now it's, it's, it's difficult to win five one-on-ones um, in any league, NFL, any league. Um, so when we can play the game where we can get the ball out quick on the pass game or we can run the ball, it keeps us in a little bit more balanced state. Uh, which allows us to have a little bit more success, which you're seeing with some of the balls down the field the last couple of weeks. You guys were easy. Man, is, get you guys here at 1230 more often. Um, but again, thank you guys. I look forward to um, all the fans that will make the trip to um, ODU. I think um, Cotton told me this may be the first time we've been to ODU. Marshall, is this the first time? First in, the, first in the new stadium. Okay, yeah, so first in the new stadium. So um, it'll be a great weekend. Looking forward to all the Herd fans up there. Looking forward to a great weekend. Uh, again, thanks, guys. Go Herd.